there's been a day of reckoning coming, and it's somewhat been delayed uh, last year as the uh, Federal Reserve got a little bit more dovish in their tone, that people thought maybe interest rates were coming down. Uh, but I think the, the industry has now gone through its five stages of grief, and they've gone past the uh, <laughs> denial and are now at acceptance. And, and so a recognition that rates aren't going to come down, and so it's not going to be some saving grace, and so they have to deal with these challenges. So now the banks, uh, the, the institutions, are busy you know, taking the appropriate marks, taking the appropriate reserves, and now we're going to have to start going through the process. It's a big problem, right? There's a trillion dollars of debt that's coming due uh, this year, $2 trillion over the next three years, and most of this debt has been financed at, at, you know, un, un, official, un, at interest rates that are not, are not normal interest rates, right? They're, they're interest rates that were much lower for the last 10 to 15 years that aren't going to come back, and now we're going to have more normal rates. So we have to go through a re-equitization means that there's going to be pain on the equity side, pain on the debt side. You saw today there was an announcement about U.S. pensions having to take more write-offs on the commercial real estate. Uh, we've seen you know, more banks having issues. I think that's going to happen as well. So I, we're just in the beginning now of facing this challenge, and it's going to be something that's going to work its way through through this year and into next year. All right, so let's just say I've got a building in Midtown wherever. Uh, I'm part of that $2.2 trillion that's coming. I go to my bank. The interest rate's much, much higher. Um, the value of my property is 30, 40, 50 percent lower. I don't know, something along that magnitude. You only loan to value 50 percent. Something's got to give there, right? There's exactly, right. So, I, I mean, I think, and again, th this is different than uh, like the 2008 crisis, right? When 2008 came, there was this in, like in, 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 injection of capital right. that really sort of lifted all values, right? In this case, we have a structural period. Uh, between the interest rates and then some types of properties aren't going to be competitive. So you referenced an office building today, right, and then that commentary. Office not only has the revaluation because of interest rates, but people use office buildings differently, and some buildings are going to be competitively obsolete. So you have to pick the spots correctly, and then you have to face that reality. So the bank has to adjust yep. its loan. The, the equity has to write off the equity and in inject new equity. And you have to pick which buildings are going to be successful in this post-pandemic world. I think, you know, the other piece of this is multifamily, which I think to me is more of the Achilles heel for the, mm. the, the broader regional bank, uh, because that's, there's a heavy concentration of multifamily in the regional banks around the United States. Um, they have, you know, something like 50 to 60 percent of their uh, book of business as, as loans. Um, and those loans, even if just from an interest rate, even if credit is good, okay. is underwater today, right? But now you also have new supply coming into the market. So there's going to be a couple of years of headwinds on that multifamily uh, market that I think is going to put a lot of pressure on these regional banks uh, going forward. So when there is pressure, are you a buyer? Are you a seller? What do you do? Yeah, listen, I think you, these are, could be a generational <laughs> moment of time to be a buyer, right? And so we're, we're active in the market. But you need to be very selective, right? It's not just about having the capital. You have to have the capabilities to choose which of the properties that are going to be successful. You need to bring down the basis. So you're not going to do this and think values are going to come back. You're not doing this on a bet that interest rates are just going to fall and everyone's going to do well. So you have to find a way, how are you going to create value? And you really can't be necessarily to try to time the top or the bottom, right? So we had a company that we sold in January of 07. And you know we didn't know it was the top, but it felt frothy, right? So we sold it. We came back in the market of August of 09. We didn't know where we were in the cycle. It just felt like the right time to enter. So moments like this is where you want to start entering before the all clear signal is sounded, but you have to be very selective, but know that there's a lot more trouble to come that's going to create more distress in the system. Um, Scott, do we have a housing shortage in this country? And if so, how did we get there? Yeah, we definitely have a housing shortage in this country, and it really it began to transpire um, after the last uh, financial crisis, right? You ended up being in a situation where, uh, you know, the ability to build new housing became more challenging, uh, people were more conservative. So there's, you know, estimates of about 6 million units of shortages of housing uh, in this country. Um, and now, you know, because of what the, the low rates during the uh, pandemic, You've had this incredible um, amount of people buying homes, financing yep. long, so existing home sales aren't trading. So we have this weird anomaly. While interest rates are up, housing prices have stayed strong, and the, and the yep. market hasn't really weakened in that regard. Um, and so you know it's going to exacerbate the problem, right? Because now if you have less construction, as we get to 2026, you're going to have less housing today yep. than, than you have the demand for housing. So when you're 
getting the feeling that, you know, there's distress, it's time to buy, even though there'll be more distress later. How do you get that feeling? Like, is there a screen that you look through to make sure like, okay, not that property, but yes, this property, even if they're like right next to each other or something. Like, how does your brain work with that, Scott? Yeah, no, I, I think you gotta be very um, concrete and have, you know, and screen's a good word, right? We have formulas. So like in for office as an example, you know, we called, we created something called Project Kodak. And we said some buildings are gonna be digital that are gonna be successful in the post pandemic world. And some are gonna be film and they're not gonna be uh, successful. And we uh, said, okay, we want to invest in digital and we put the whole set of criteria as to what is digital and those are the the, the properties that are digital what is digital so, so digital are buildings like like this bloomberg building right Darn which right. are you know have places where people can collaborate people are, it's, they won't want to come to work because you can engage with people they're in good communities they're easy access from public transportation mm -hmm. um and so that that is something that ultimately will be successful uh, of attracting people and and so you need digital buildings but they still may have broken capital structures so our objective on investing is identify the digital buildings with the broken capital structures invest in them fix the broken capital structures and when you do that you see the leasing like last year we leased two million square feet <coughs> of space this year you know so far we have a million and a half square feet of leases out right oh, so wow. if you have the right building with the right capital structure hmm. there's a lot of tenants that want to be there